Let's talk about the armature that I use to start absolutely every drawing I do. Um, the armature is a simplified version of a skeleton composed of ovals, spheres, more ovals, and then lines to represent the limbs. It serves a number of different purposes. Most important purpose is that it allows me to scale my figure very quickly. And the second most important purpose is that it allows me to get my proportions right. So this represents a simplified version of a skeleton. It has to have a very specific proportion in order to guide me into doing a drawing that is accurate. So let's quickly talk about the proportions of our shapes. Our oval is one head. The distance between the oval and the ribcage is half a head. The distance from the top of the ribcage to the bottom of the ribcage is approximately one and a half heads, 1.5. The distance between the ribcage and the hips is about half a head. The hips themselves are about one head up and down and one head side to side, one each on H. Let's talk about the shoulders. The shoulders are egg shapes that are approximately three-fourths the size of the head. So 7.75. The arms from the top of the shoulder to the fingers should be approximately three heads. The legs start at the midpoint on the hips and then from the origin of the femur all the way down to the kneecap should be approximately two heads. And then from the kneecap all the way down to the heel should also be approximately two heads. Now, that's to the heel, not to the toes. If we're looking down at the figure, the toes are gonna to project ever so slightly further forward. All right, so a few other really important proportions. The distance from shoulder to shoulder is usually approximately two heads. What else? Uh, let me think about this. I think I got everything in terms of proportion. Um, there's my armature. Now, um, <clears throat> the armature is pretty easy to draw when the, the figure is straight on. However, um, this represents a simplified version of a skeleton. These lines represent the cervical portion of the spine, the lumbar portion of the spine. So when you're drawing this shape from the side, it has to look a little bit different. The oval shape stays the same, regardless of the angle at which you're looking at it from. However, this is profile view. We need to draw the neck growing out slightly from the back. When we draw the rib cage, the rib cage has a slight tilt to it, like this. It's going to be slightly off vertical. The spine is going to grow from the back. Again, these lines represent the spine. So it's not like a string hanging off a balloon. These are actually anatomical structures. When you draw the hips, you're going to draw the hips lined up underneath the ribcage, like this. And then when you draw the legs, you're going to find the middle point of the hips here. And we're going to drop our legs down like this, like this. I'm going to draw something that looks like this. So our shoulders start from the side here and here when the figure is straight on. In profile view, they're going to start somewhere here. Okay, profile view is easy enough. When you have three-quarter view, when the figure is rotated at about a 45 degree angle, things get a little bit more complicated. So let's draw the head. So if the figure was facing straight towards me, the line would be here. If it was in profile view, it would be over here. In three quarter view, the neck is gonna grow somewhere here. The rib cage is gonna have a very slight angle to it, not quite as much as this, but slightly, like this. The spine is going to run slightly from the side here. The hips are going to be directly underneath the ribcage. And then here it gets a little bit tricky because 
I can see where one of the legs starts. It's going to start approximately here. The other one starts slightly behind the sphere, all the way over to this side. So it's going to go in. In this case, the leg is going to project ever so slightly forward, perhaps like this. And then this leg is going to start all the way over here, like this. So let's say in the three-quarter armature view, we're going to get something that looks like this. Now for the shoulders, we know that the shoulders straight on, start side to side. Here they're going to start in the front of the ribcage. In three-quarter view, because the ribcage is rotated this way, like this, one of the shoulders is going to rotate like this. The other one is going to be slightly behind the ribcage. It's going to be all the way over here, like this. So one arm might come down like this. The other one might be here, some here, here somewhere. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, from the back. Let's deal with the back view. Which is going to look very similar to the front view, by the way. Uh, but let's say it's three-quarter, but facing away from me. You're going to start off with the same oval shape for the head. The neck is going to grow here somewhere. Our rib cage is now is going, to, is going to tilt the other direction, like this. Following the angle of the spine, by the way. Here are our hips. We still need to find the midpoint here. So one leg is going to start out here, like this. Like this. And now we're going to have a wedge shape that goes back in space. The other leg is going to start slightly behind the circle here. So in this case, one shoulder is going to be here. And then the other shoulder is going to be over here on this side. Building this armature correctly is one of the more difficult aspects of figure drawing. Because uh, right now we're dealing with a very simple pose. Ultimately, the poses are going to be very, very convoluted. There's going to be lots of twists, foreshortening, and even though these shapes need to be really, really simple, the proportions have to be very specific, they have to be accurate, and then the angles of the armature in the joints and the body have to reflect very accurately what's actually happening in front of you. So, um, the first thing though is to remember the general proportions that we're seeing here. Um, I'm going to include a photo after the video of this proportion chart. Um, I'm going to reinforce it to make it a little bit darker. Everybody, write it down and commit it to memory so that when you're drawing, you know exactly how long a leg needs to be, four heads, how long an arm needs to be, three heads, the general width of the body from the front, two heads, all that kind of stuff. This chart should be absolutely ingrained in your mind as you're drawing.